here's one that's kind of well debated. Shimmies, are they yep. totally genetic or can they be caused by change of parameters, pH, KH? You know, what's your thoughts on that? I, I, I believe water. I mean, there's not a lot of research into this because it's not really anything... Um, <laughs> not a major major problem i do believe water plays a massive part mm. in this a natural makeup of the water beyond what what we will analyze typically and certain types of benny are more prone to it this this mm. we do know which then ties into sort of like you could say the lineage the breeder uh genetics but it's the genetics come down to the benny type that it produces now the real real intense thick red that looks crazy you know absolutely shining that tends to be more prone to shimmies than the real softer mm -hmm. colors that you get uh, i've okay. seen that countless times over the years but that's not to say this, again this is always the fun with the variables of koi i've seen uh you know fish that you know are good performers in my water typically they go to another pond and an absolute disaster Mm. Yeah, this is this is why again, literally in Japan, there's regions and areas that become known as being better for for raising and producing certain varieties of koi, mm -hmm. and it's because and it ultimately comes down to the water and how the water is in that area. You know, yeah. so yeah, I, I it's it's a real tough one, but I think with them, it's about getting to know what actually works for your pond. Mm -hmm. Over the years, you know, if you start buying Koaku from Matsue, for example, which are typically known to be a bit better, the Ben is a little bit softer uh, in most cases, and they, they tend to do really, really well. You start buying them and you have good success, happy days. If you tend to find, you know, knowing that it's a good choice, if you then go and uh, put them in your pond and, and they're a nightmare with shimmies, that's definitely not to blame the fish. You know mm -hmm. that they just don't do very well in your water. It could, it could it. even be it could even be the case that that you boil it down koaku might not be the right variety to have in your water mm. you know that's the, that's literally can be the case there's definitely a, a bit of a stigma up this end of the country about i mean i love a it's my favorite variety and they are literally known as just shimmy goy up here and yeah nobody no never touch them with a barge pole because they'll just go gray they'll get shimmies and like, I'm trying to change. I, I really want to try and do a sagi right. I want to win. A, I want to go to a show and try and win yep. something. It's a sagi. That's my goal. Nice. But I, I had a Genji and a, and a, and a Ogata one. And yep. changed, changed my bead filter over to my shower. All of a sudden, shimmy started coming up like almost like a sumi pattern on them. And yep. so it's that change of filter. I just wondered whether or not. It is not change your filter right there in what you've said to me. Ogata, I'm not familiar with, but your Genji ones in the pot, I, I do, and I know they are a little bit more prone to shimmy in mm. for sure. Uh, who's the other one as well? Off the top of my head, can't remember. It'll come to me at some point. Oh, Marisay, a lot typically mm. they seem to attract it a hell of a lot more. Whereas when you move into the real realms of Asagis, Oya, Otsuka two absolute top dogs in a sagi production yeah mm -hmm. they do a lot lot better and yeah. i can, can see that from the toe side i've had toe side from marise uh yigenji uh tanaka sagis do really well uh tanaka has a hero there's a lot of tanakas about which will throw you but one of the guys mm -hmm. uh, up in takizawa village his do really well but certainly oya i've had real great success with oya or sagi okay so I, I think and then and then we've got obviously coming down to selecting them because you say about there becoming too dark this is where you'll find a couple of videos uh on my, my youtube channel about sagi selection for years years and years and years i've seen people picking them wrong all the time mm -hmm. as tosai nissa you want these things as pale as you can get them yeah because they're a naturally darkening variety i think we said it at the beginning oil blood uh, sorry not oil blood Magoi blood, they are the next evolution of Magoi. So there's a mm. lot of black sat in that skin. And yeah, when it hits the right water, it's going to start coming through. Yeah. There's, there's no doubt about that one. Yes, Shirley. Shirley uh, bought some amazing Asagis off me back in the day. She did. I'm not <laughs> sure if she's still got any of them, but uh, yeah, shares a common love for them. Uh, but yeah, you've got, got, to, got to pick the things right. So 
Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll see it under the pond that's growing on here. You know, ones that were look like Yukia Sagi, the snow Asagis, mm-hmm. as I expected, are now forming into normal Asagis. Mm-hmm. But really, really pale, uh, really nice, and, and they're coming on an absolute tree. It's still got it. Look at that. That, that must be some, <laughs> some age, that fish now. Jesus. Uh, yeah, so, so that's the best I can say. Probably look more, you know, different breeders. It's not always just one. One don't work, you know try another try another see where you get but i can mm-hmm. tell you right now that's not if, if i'm buying a sagi i'm going oya otsuka straight away and tanaka they're they're my little pool that that i buy from and okay. typically they do very well 